We are back inside the State Champs Sports Network studios to bring you the best highlights of another phenomenal week in high school sports. My name is Lauren Plant. Welcome back to State Champs Sports Network's High School Sports Show. Now, we are powered by our friends at Lawrence Technological University. If you're a student athlete, LTU has the best of all worlds. Degree programs that can lead to a seriously great job and a sports program that wants you. Isn't it great to be wanted? Recruit yourself at LTU Athletics. I'm Sarah Davis and we've got a great show lined up for you. To prove to you that we try and cover as many different sports as we can in Indiana, weather tried to throw us off, but we found some track and field and lacrosse. That's coming up. We've had a straight up slug fest on the diamond. You dig the long balls? Stay tuned. All that and much, much more of the top games we covered in three states. Let us begin. I'm Ryan Slocum, and we begin with the action from Monday afternoon as the Woodhaven Warriors welcome the Shamrocks from Detroit Catholic Central. Woodhaven coming in at 6-1 on the season, bottom of the second. The senior, Ryan Shapaniak, rips it to right center for the stand-up double. Zach Phillips comes hustling around. He gets to third on the play. Next batter, Drew Thorning here with the blooper that allows Phillips to score. Woodhaven led it five to nothing after two innings. More from the Warriors in the third with a runner on first. This is the junior Raymond Perez taking this offering deep and over the wall in left center for the two run homer. Woodhaven now up by seven. The bat still cooking for the Warriors. Philip Miller goes up the middle for the base knock, scoring Joe Hanniger. Woodhaven was up nine zip after three, but the Catholic Central offense wakes up in the fourth. The sophomore, Trey Cassidy, takes it deep. That one is gone for his first career varsity home run, and it gets the Shamrocks on the board. Next up, the junior, Connor Aplegian, who sends a shot to left center. And it seems like the jet stream carried that one over the fence. Detroit Catholic Central now down 9-2. And like DJ Khaled, how about another one? The senior Nick Zappia with the blast. It goes over the wall in left center. That is back to back to back jacks. And it is now a 9-3 contest. And they're not done. Couple of batters later, this senior Jacob Pelosi gets in on the home run parade with this two-run moonshot that hits off the scoreboard. Detroit Catholic Central making it interesting. We now have a 9-5 ball game. And it was more of the same in the fifth. It's Cassidy going the opposite way, and it goes up and over for his second homer of the day. Detroit Catholic Central now down 9-6. to six. Then it's Zappia getting in on the fun once again. He belts this one over the fence for his second jack of the game. In total, six home runs for the Shamrocks. After the top of the fifth, CC down just a pair at 9-7. to seven. But the Warriors respond in the bottom half of the frame with some clutch two-out hitting with the bases juiced. Josue Gutierrez laces it to the wall and left for the triple. Everyone's coming around. Austin Alter just beats the throw at the plate, and he is definitely fired up. Woodhaven back up five at 12-7. Let's go! Let's go, baby! The Shamrocks then had runners at the corners in the sixth. Guess what? It's not a home run. The KZU College commit Josh Getz comes through with the infield single that scores Evan Hager. Detroit CC now down 12-10 after six. Now to the final inning. Shamrocks looking to complete the comeback. The junior, Peter Denick with the base hit. The tying runs now at first and second with no out. Woodhaven brought in the Michigan State bound Shipaniac to close this one out and he gets the job done, striking out the side, including Cassidy, to end it. Woodhaven hangs on to win the thriller. 12 to 10 is the final. The Warriors improve to seven and one on the season. Feels great having to come in there with, you know, no outs, guys on first and second. We're only up by two. You know, you just kind of got to come in and do the job and it's, you know, it was a high scoring game and we prevailed at the end, so that's all that really matters. 
They competed every single inning, and that's what you want. You know, you, games are going to have ebbs and flows, and and they definitely had the momentum there for a couple innings in the middle of the game, and and our kids responded. Like I said, they they never gave up, and they continued to score runs and make plays. That's what you want. I'm Mike Gerlaitis. The trophy as well as bragging rights on the line for the 2021 Powder Puff football game as the Mustangs of Marion take on the Vipers from Regina looking for their fourth consecutive victory. The defending champs strike first with the passing game. QB captain Miranda No Mercy Nicholas finds the generator. Jenna O'Brien wide open for the TD. Regina up 7-0 after one. The Vipers again threatening in the red zone. This time they get it done on the ground. Brooke Brown, they call her Touch Brown, and she lives up to her nickname as Regina's lead now increases to 14. We take you later in the quarter. Again, the Vipers with the ball in scoring position. The pitch to Bella O'Bell Beckham Pine. She finds pay dirt as Regina takes a commanding 21-0 lead as we head to the half. Marion looking to get back in it. The handoff to Coco, go loco, Chinonis. She takes it 28 yards to the end zone as the Mustangs trail 24-7. Check out Kaylin the Shots Brown doing just that here. She goes 50 yards to finish this one out as Regina completes the four-peat defeating Marion in the Powder Puff by a final score of 31-7. I'm Ryan Slocum. Trenton playing its first home game on its newly renovated field, complete with field turf on the infield. They played host to their rivals from Allen Park on Thursday afternoon. And the Trojanettes get the party started in the first. This is our total softball player of the year candidate, Lily Velamont, taking the offering deep, very deep. Over the new scoreboard and left, it's a two-run homer for the junior Northwestern commit. Trenton up two zip after the opening inning. Allen Park coming in at 4-1 early in the campaign. Top of the third now, runner at second for the Michigan commit. Maddie Ramey, the junior, smacks a base hit. Faith Heschke comes around to score. That ties it at two. Jump to the fourth. Jaguars trailing 3-2 with a pair on. Mackenzie Badillo goes up the middle. Avery Garden and Molly Hool cross the dish. That puts AP up 4-3 and they were just getting started. The Jags capitalizing with runners in scoring position. This is Madison Houle dropping one into right center. That scores Pesky. Allen Park now up a three spot at 6-3. The next batter is the future Wolverine, Ramey, and she takes this one the opposite way for a two-run double. Bailey McAllister and Houle both cross the plate. That puts the Jags in command on top, 8-3. And they're still not done. Morgan Sizemore keeps the hit parade going, driving this pitch to left center. That brings Ramey home. It's a seven-run frame for the Jags. Allen Park led it 9-3. to three. But don't count Trenton out just yet. Bottom five, London Williams with the pop-up, and it drops into right. Velamont comes around from second and beats the tag at the plate. Trojanettes down. 10-4, good buddy. But AP gets that run back in the sixth. Yes. It's Ramey once again from the window to the wall. That's good for a stand-up triple. She would later come in to score, putting the Jags back up seven at 11-4. The Trojanettes claw back in the bottom of the sixth. The sophomore, Gracie Rickman, takes it to center for the base knock. That drives in Kendall Gerhardt. And a couple of batters later, base is juiced for the cleanup hitter, Olivia Raymond. The senior gives this one a ride to center for a triple of her own. That clears the bases, and just like that, Trenton back in it, down just three at 11-8. But they could not cool the Allen Park bats. 
top seven. It's the sophomore, Molly Hool, going deep. And bye bye The solo blast would ice it. Allen Hart beats the rivals from Trenton 12 to eight the final. The Jags improve to five and one on the season. It feels really great. We really worked together as a team and we came back from losing to Woodhaven. So we really came back and picked each other up. Time now to take a look inside Lawrence Technological University Athletics. The ever-growing field of competitive gaming is continuing to take off at Lawrence Tech. I'm really excited to bring Emilio on. He's a support player for League of Legends, and he's really passionate about making the team successful and being a part of something successful. And I think that that passion will show in his gameplay and amongst his growing teammates. I first started playing League about seven years ago with my friends and they just weren't playing at the same mentality that I was playing. I wanted to get better and better at the game and they were comfortable with just making the same mistakes over and over because it is after all just a game but I wanted to be like a more competitive game. So then when I got here I started seeing people playing at what started out as GG Leagues and is now more competitive than GG Leagues with CLL and I thought you know maybe this is my chance to find people that also want to not make the same mistakes over and over again. Personally, I'm looking forward to growing as a player, playing against good people and seeing how I stack up against them. But I also am looking forward to seeing how the team grows, how it's gonna look when I leave it versus how it started out, how it is right now. I was looking at the universities that had a good game design program and this university was among them. I started applying to universities, seeing which ones appealed to me more than others and LTU just looked like the best choice. Coming here as an international, I thought it would be more difficult than it ended up being. The people here are very friendly. You meet people from all over the world, so you can find a place to fit into. And when it comes to playing, you don't need to have the same culture or the same background as people who play. You just need to play the same game, and everything will sort of fit together in how you play with how they play. If you're planning on coming to LTU, it's okay if you have an idea of what you want to do here, you did your research and you come here with that goal in mind. But it's also okay if you don't have an idea of what you want to do specifically and you come here to experience. You can come here and learn everything about what you like doing, what you don't like doing. You maybe end up not choosing the path that you wanted to in the first place, but that is still perfectly fine. We come here to university to learn and to experience. With the gaming program in general, maybe you realize that you don't really like making games and that will be fine. Yeah, the gaming program offers you programming skills or art skills in general. You can use those wherever you want. Take your future into your hands. Visit ltuathletics.com and recruit yourself. Lawrence Tech, where Blue Devils dare. I'm Grant Pugh reporting from Terre Haute North with the host Patriots welcome Terre Haute South in the track and field meet. We'll start with the boys 100 yard dash. In lane 5 is Braden Bender from Terre Haute South. He flies down the track in the battle with North's Eli Moody. Bender gets to the line first in a time of 11.45. Great time considering the conditions. On the girls' side in lane four is Chloe Orr from Terre Haute North. She makes up ground about halfway through, finishes strong in a time of 13.14, just ahead of teammate Mackenzie Turner. To the field events, this is North Dalton Sturm on the left along with Donald Dan. They have both cleared 5'10 in the high jump this year. Sturm going for even higher than he thought, just hits the bar. He gets the big win though in that event. Back to the track, South's Courtney Jones won all four of her events, including the 110 meter hurdles. Here she helps the Braves win the 4x400 meter relay. Great effort from Courtney. And Kale Light was also very good, winning the 800 meter run, also running the anchor leg on the relay. More points for the Terre Haute South Braves. Three more events to spotlight. Parker Brown from South wins the long jump, leaping 19 feet 5 inches. Outstanding jump right here. While in the 200 meter dash, it was a couple of Patriots. Eli Moody holding off Parker to win in a time of 23.4 seconds. Meantime, Chloe Orr makes it back-to-back -back wins in the 100 and the 200. She crosses in 28.1. So the North girls win, the South boys win. What a night for both Terre Haute North and Terre Haute South. I'm
I'm Andrew Garcia from the Hammond area. NCC foes clash on the girls' tennis courts. Kankakee Valley on the road to face Munster. Beginning in one singles, Addie Clawwetter serves up the ace for point. The Munster co-captain wins 6-0-6-0. Moving on to two singles, Julia Dykstra sends her opponent's serve back for the point. The KV sophomore wins 7-6, 6-4. In three singles, Emmeline Miller waits patiently before sending one right past her opponent for the point. The junior wins 6-2, 6-3. On to two doubles, we find the tandem of Wanae Irfan and Anushka Majetti. Majetti going upstairs and smashing one down. The pair win their match 6-0, 6-0. And last but certainly not least, we end in one doubles with Libby Fesco and Emily Rakich. Rakich fires one back in the alley for the point. Fesco and Rakich win 7-6-6-3. Munster wins 4-1. I'm Andrew Garcia from the Hammond area. Northwest Indiana has seen spots of rain and snow all week. The skies finally cleared for Valpo to battle Lake Central in a Doonland Athletic Conference showdown. The Vikings get things going early. Chris Ron takes ball four. That forces in a run as Carter Kosiara crosses the dish. Visitors draw first blood. Lake Central looks to respond in the third. Griffin Tobias reads this ball perfectly and sprints in from third base. We are all tied up at one apiece. And now the Indians get defensive. Look at Hunter Snyder layout for this ball. The throw finally rolls into the glove of Graham Weber at first. We are still tied at one heading into the bottom of the fifth. That's where Lake Central goes to work. Carter Dorn pokes one to the left for a hit. That brings home two runners. Blake Nyhart is followed by a hustling Snyder. The Indians have a 3-1 lead and they aren't done yet shortly after. Matt Santana sends one to the left for the RBI. Josh Adamszewski scores. Valpo does retire a runner at the plate. However, Lake Central increases their lead to three runs. The hit parade continues with Jacob Warren. The junior dumps one into left. In comes Weber as the home team makes it a 5-1 game, but Valpo isn't going anywhere just yet. Top of the six, Vikings threatening. Dylan Rodriguez finds a hole up the middle. Scoring on the play is Josh Brinson. The senior makes it a 5-2 game. Later in the frame, the deficit is now two for the Vikings. Lake Central still having trouble on the mound. Ty Gill sees one squirt by the catcher. That allows Rodriguez to come in just like that. It's a one-run game. Now it's up to Gill. The senior drives one in the left deep enough to score the run. We are all tied up at five. This one would need extras. And in the 10th, Lake Central with a chance to win it. Snyder going the other way with one. When Valpo can't make a play on it as the ball gets into left, there's your game winner. It took 10 innings, but the Indians go home happy. Lake Central wins 6-5. Kevin Trzinski reporting from Burbuff Jesuit Prep for Girls Lacrosse Action. The host Braves taking on rivals Bishop Shatar Trojans. The home team Braves sitting at 6 and 4 so far this season and for the Trojans. They've been on a hot streak winning 6 games in a row after dropping their first two of the season. Bishop Shatar got the ball rolling on the road. Off the whistle near the net, Audrey Russell with the dish out front to Riley Dixon and the junior puts home the goal to put Shatar back up on the board first where they lead 1-0. About a minute later, her buff retorts. Junior midfielder Anna Salentine keeping her feet pumping on the drive to the net. Shatar defense trying to adjust on the fly and that opens up Kate Grammel Spatcher who receives the pass and puts the biscuit in the basket, tying this game up at one all. Jumping ahead in the half, game still tied but now at three all. Shatar looking to take the lead before halftime and they would. Thanks to some quick passing by the Trojans, it's the junior Kylie Nagel getting the job done as Bishop Shatar heads into the break up a digit. The second half was just as close as the first. Again, the Trojans excelling well in the passing game that lands them opportunities like this. Senior Audrey Russell lobs it over to Ruby Mason and the junior will bury it for Shatar. Jumping ahead with less than two minutes on the board. Game tied at seven, Bishop Shatar playing tough on the road. Kylie Nagel spots Ruby Mason wide open in the box and she has no issues putting this one in the back of the net and that's all she wrote. Bishop Shatar comes out on top over Brabuff Jesuit in a close battle. 8-7, your final score. Did you record an unbelievable touchdown, a game-winning goal, or just a proud parent moment? Then we want your clip. Upload your video to the brand new State Champs Network app so we can feature it on one of our shows and give your player, team, and school the recognition they deserve. All it takes is just a few easy clicks, and every clip that is submitted will automatically be eligible for prizes. Download the State Champs Network app today for iPhone and Android devices.
Magnificat looking to score some runs against the Westlake Demons. Pick it up with Magnificat down 3-0, two on. Rory Deaver rips it to short. Westlake takes the out at third base, but that allows Abby Cito to score. That gets the Blue Streaks on the board. Westlake would get that run right back. Maria Rigo up the middle. That brings home Jessica Bernath. It's four to one Demons. Two on for Cito in the bottom of the fourth and she delivers. Past the diving shortstop and into center. Two runs score on the play as Natalie Sekarak beats the throw home. And now it's just a one run game. Big two out rally for Westlake in the bottom of the fifth. Bernath hits it over the outfielder's head. She's gonna easily cruise in for a double. Alexa Corey then goes right back up the middle, deflected off the pitcher. Close play at first base. Cito can't hang on and Bernath scores. That run would be huge for Westlake. Bottom of the seventh, Westlake up five to four. Two runners in scoring position for Magnificat. Heads up play by the second baseman, Corey, beating Caroline Johnson to first base. That ends the game and Westlake hangs on for a 5-4 win over Magnificat. I'm Chuck Pellerito with some baseball highlights from St. Francis to Sales as the Stallions were at home taking on the Bishop Watterson Eagles. Pick things up in the top of the fifth. Run around second for the Eagles. Noah Graham at the dish and a line drive to left field. Charlie Bernados on his horse around third. Slides in, beats the tag. Graham up to third on the throw and we were tied up at two. Stallions half of the inning and a run around second. Aiden Cannon doubles down the left field line. Ryan Gustafson scores and DeSales takes the lead back three to two. Bottom of the sixth and DeSales adding on. Runners on the corners. Connor Kegelswitz with a big rip to right field. That's off the fence. Clears the bases. Puts himself on third with a stand-up triple and a 5-2 lead. Cedric Stewart up next. Ground ball between third and short. Brings in Kegelswitz. And heading into the last frame, Stallions held a 6-2 lead. Bases loaded full of Eagles. One run already in and two men down. Noah Groover at the dish, he hits a liner into left field. Everybody on the move, two runs come in and it was a 6-5 game. Ryan Mulligan hits a looper that's just over the glove of a leaping shortstop. Jack Byron comes around to score and ties us up. Dominic Arisi up at the dish with a chance to take the lead and he delivers. A ground ball tucked just inside the bag at third, brings Groover home from third. Arisi gets caught in the rundown between first and second, but they head to the bottom of the seventh with the lead. And Arisi on the mound will close it out. Pop up behind the bag at second, Ryan Rudzinski makes the catch, closes this one out as Bishop Watterson with the seventh inning rally gets the seven to six win over the DeSales Stallions. I'm Dylan Morello and we're at Mason High School for a top matchup in girls lacrosse. The Comets number four in the state taking on the number one team, the Upper Arlington Golden Bears. Upper Arlington wasting no time here. Ava Walters fakes the wraparound attempt, gives it out in front to Carla Galapo, to Ryan Atkins who attacks the net and gets out to a one nothing lead seven minutes in for the Golden Bears. Golden Bears keeping their foot on the gas. Walters trying to attack, gets caught up in a lot of Comet traffic, somehow gets a pass over to Paris Alexander, and a quick wrister puts them up too. A pair of free position shots from Campbell Stone would up at a five goal lead halfway through the first half, but the Comets would answer back two minutes later. Megan Carroll would pass it in front of the net for Lila Glinski. She turns and fires, getting Mason on the board, but they would trail 10 to one at the half. Things would start to come together in the second half for Mason. El Samini able to find Carroll sprinting behind the net from a tight angle, gets a shot off, and that one tickles the twine. Then Carroll would repay the favor and get an assist, finding Samini three, a lot of traffic. Her shots beat the goalie on the short side. But the Golden Bears were just too much tonight. Galapo giving a big lane for Stone to attack the net. She wouldn't miss her shot. And Upper Arlington goes on to win this top five matchup over Mason 15-7, the final score. I 
I'm Kevin Scherzinski, and we're at New Albany High School for a girls lacrosse matchup between the home team Eagles, who rank at number 12, and the number three ranked Thomas Worthington Cardinals. Game tied at one early on, and right off the faceoff, Ellie McShellen wins it, races up the field, pass over to Abby Cole, and she gets an awkward shot on goal, but it finds the back of the net, and the Eagles take the lead. Cardinals answer right back to tie it up at two, and the Eagles do what they do. Cole setting up the offense, the give for a cutting Mary Carson, and the quick shot puts New Albany right back in front. Back and forth we go. Kate Isaacson looking for somebody to get open, doesn't see anything, and she takes it herself. Nice shot over the top of the goalie and ties us back up. Card starting to get on a roll. Amanda Armstrong behind the net. Quick rip from Sarah Foreman puts Worthington out front. Eagles come right back. Carson runs out behind the net, finds McShellen, takes a shot from a real tight angle and gets it in. And that ties us up at four. Eagles ripping off three in a row in before the half and a nice one off a free shot for sophomore Cassidy Clampham, making it six to four into the break. New Albany working quickly. Kay Kalchek sprinting to the net. Across the net pass finds Cole and she gets a top shelf, making it eight to four. Cardinals not going away though. Isaacson not missing her chance on the free shot, closing the gap, and then she gets another one making it nine to six. New Albany lead. But the Eagles were just too much. Clamp them. Over to Cole, a nice spin move and a sidearm shot for the goal. And the Eagles with the upset beating Thomas Worthington 13 to six, the final. Just watching those highlights again reminds us that there is nothing like the thrill of high school sports. We love bringing you this show each and every week. If you dig the content, follow State Champs Network on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Give us a like and please share it so more people can check out this show. Another great show on the network is our recruiting show called State Champs Scout Show. Drops every Wednesday, chock full of the latest offers, commitments, and prospects news in the major sports like basketball and football in Ohio, Michigan, and Indiana. But we don't stop there. We dive into the other sports as well. Be in the know. Watch State Champs Scout Show on the State Champs Sports Network. And as we always say, let's do it again next week. He's Lauren, I'm Sarah. Have an awesome week. State Champs High School Sports Show is proudly presented by Lawrence Technological University, where Blue Devils dare.